back with another video. Today we have the Fear Frequency, Sonic Weapons, Havana Syndrome. It's on both screens. Let's get straight into the video. Have you ever wondered what ghosts sound like? In the early 1980s, Vic Tandy was working at Warwick Labs in the UK where he designed medical equipment. And there were rumors among the staff that the building was haunted. But Tandy figured this was related to the constant sound of life support systems that were operating on site. But one night, Tandy was working late when he started to feel strange. The hairs on the back of his neck stood up. He broke into a cold sweat and felt the sense of dread wash over him. His heart started to race and he had the very specific feeling that he was being watched. Then, out of the corner of his eye, he caught the glimpse of a gray figure drifting across the room. He turned around and the figure was gone. Absolutely terrified, Vic Tandy bolted from the lab and raced home. Now, after he calmed down, he vowed to find a logical, scientific explanation for what happened. Well, did he? Well. Vic Tandy got to his office the next day and started looking around for the ghost. Now, he didn't find one, but he did notice something strange. He was an avid fencer, and in his lab, he had a foil locked in a vice. Wait, he sold stolen merchandise? No, that's a fence. Fencing is a style of sword fighting using a foil. A sword made out of foil? No, a, a foil is the type of sword. I'm so confused. It, it doesn't matter. Anyway, a foil sword. was locked in a vice, and Tandy noticed it was vibrating really quickly, even though nothing was touching it. Now, it turns out a fan was recently installed in the lab and was causing a sound wave to bounce between the walls. And the wave's intensity was focused in the center of the room, which was the location of the foil. So what? And where he was standing when he saw the ghost. Now, Tandy calculated the frequency of the sound at about 19 hertz. This frequency is important. The range of human hearing starts at 20 hertz, so Tandy's fan wasn't audible. It's what's known as infrasound. But just because we can't hear it, doesn't mean it can't affect us. All material objects have a natural resonant frequency. And if the object is exposed to a sound wave of this frequency, it'll vibrate in response. This is called sympathetic resonance. And you can test this. If you strike a key on a piano in one room, a piano in another room will resonate that same note. This is also why running your finger around the rim of a glass at just the right speed will produce sound. Now back to Tandy's lab. It turns out that the human eye resonates at about 19 hertz. So what appeared to be a ghost was actually Tandy's eye vibrating at the frequency of the fan. Since this frequency has an actual physical effect on the body, the sound was causing a sense of fear and anxiety to employees in the area. And Tandy said that when they switched off the fan, it was like a huge weight was lifted. And these frequencies don't just affect humans. Researchers have discovered that just before a tiger attacks, its roar contains frequencies at 18 hertz, which could disorient their prey long enough for the tiger to move in for the kill. Now, just under 20 hertz has been called the fear frequency for how it affects mammals. And lots of horror movies have used sounds at or just above the fear frequency to make their films even scarier. What happens if we go lower? Lower than 18 hertz? Yeah. Things get much worse. Uh, how much worse? Uh, ever hear the brown note? The brown note? Uh, does that mean what I think it means? Grab a diaper. Oh, no! The brown note is said to occur at frequencies between 5 and 9 hertz. This is the hypothetical range of sound that supposedly causes humans to lose control of their bowels. I say hypothetical because nobody's been able to actually prove it yet. The brown note was famously busted by Adam Savage on Mythbusters when he surrounded himself with giant speakers and had the note pumped into his body. Now, he didn't feel so great afterwards, but his diaper stayed clean. He actually wore a diaper? Yup. <laughs> I love Mythbusters. Me too. But here's the thing about that experiment. Air really isn't a great conductor of sound, especially at low frequencies. But when you're physically connected to the vibration, its effects are much more intense. The United States Space Program conducted tests that transferred brown note and other frequencies directly to subjects' bodies by vibrating cockpit chairs. Now, test frequencies range from 0.5 hertz to 40 hertz and power levels of 160 decibels. Is that loud? Well, for a comparison, a lawnmower is 90 decibels, a chainsaw is about 130, and a gunshot is 140. So testing people at 160 dB, even if you can't technically hear the sound, it's gonna get results. Test subjects experienced nausea, hallucinations, difficulty breathing, and involuntary motor functions. 
Now, nobody officially crapped their pants, but this experiment is probably where the urban myth came from. But you don't have to be an astronaut to get sick from sound. There's something called wind turbine syndrome. Now, not everyone, but a little over 20% of people who live near large wind turbine farms report all kinds of negative effects. And they range from difficulty concentrating all the way up to extreme stress and uncontrollable migraines. In one instance, an air traffic controller almost caused a fatal plane crash because he was experiencing insomnia caused by living near a wind farm. Now, there have been about 20 studies done on wind farms, but they found no link between the turbines and people getting sick. Who, uh, who conducted these studies? Uh, the wind turbine companies. Uh-huh, I thought so. Still. <sighs> I, was, I was about to ask that question, Hucklefish. Hecklefish. Like what I say all the time. What we have common is pain, whether it's loved ones that have health complications or had leg amputations or whatever. It's still all follow back on what's allowed. The standardized FDA approved poison. Y'all think it's good because the FDA, FDA approved it. And they conduct the study, but you have to follow the money. Who provided the money for them to conduct that study? They under the same wing. I'm not surprised at this. Who who conducted the study? The wind farm people? Of course they're gonna say What ain't poison? Somebody let me know what is not poison. Everything is poison. It sounds that you don't even pick up, but your body resides in mostly water. And you can go and look up these videos of what frequencies do to water. You can start boiling water with frequencies. You can freeze it at a temperature, and some of them have different geometric-like shapes. Some of them, if you play the negative frequencies, the look of the, it'll look negative as well, like. I don't know why it's that far-fetched for people to think your body's sitting mostly water and look up how frequencies interact with water depending on what frequencies is being played like the music industry first of all the lyrics is bad they cast some bad spells and then you got the frequency at 440 hertz and it hurts when it should be at 432 hertz you can go and look up a video on youtube and play 432 hertz i'm pretty sure they got it blocked still it's frequencies that are like I don't know, like, let's say if you the inside of you, because everything is energy vibrating at different frequencies, right? We may look at something that look like a stationary solid, solid object. But when you really look at it with a particular scope, everything is literally vibrating. So, yeah, they got, it's frequencies that you literally can play that can shake your body of these parasites. You know how they got different names for them, the C word and and these words is literally patented you literally can't say that you can cure the following otherwise they can literally take your whole video down like it's literally patented someone created it to attack the populace but yet everybody dumb deaf and blind still don't nobody care it should be on 432 hertz it's on 444 hertz i mean 440 hertz Let's continue. It has been proven that people who live and work near a lot of noise experience higher levels of stress and have more cortisol in their blood than people who live in quiet environments. So if we know sound can be dangerous, could it be used as a weapon? Of course. I'm gonna go with the yes. Yep. The most I heard um people that live closer to um airlines, like where you people that live closer to those, all the uh, electricity and the frequencies around the area I heard. They life expectancy is shorted by whatever percentage. Like it's, you got 5G towers everywhere. We got the frequencies from the, the 5G, the modem, the router, and you ban let it paint because let it paint block the EMF radio. There's so much going on. I need EMF stickers from all my electronics. I need a copper cord to put in the ground and have it going throughout my window and connect it to me at night like so i can really ground it's so much that's going on 
down to you having your bed you go to sleep the wrong way like you supposed to be depending on where you at in the world you're supposed to be laying at a you 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 know what i'm talking about it's just it's just so much you sleep what more than one different fabric on it can throw off your circadian rhythm the shoes the soles in the shoe like what what isn't poison it looked like everything is poison i can't think of nothing that isn't poison even my favorite songs i will play nine times out of ten is still on that 440 hertz most dangerous frequencies to humans are at about seven hertz this is the median alpha rhythm of the brain and the resonant frequency of many of the body's organs well, what does all that word salad mean this means that at high enough volume these sounds can directly affect the central nervous system causing panic convulsions vomiting and with long enough exposure organ rupture and death and one of the most well-known inventors of infrasonic weapons was a Russian-born French scientist named Vladimir Gavro. Mm -hmm. Now, Gavro became interested in sound research in 1957 when he was asked to cure an unknown illness that was affecting people at a research plant in Marseille. Now, Gavro tracked the problem to air conditioning units that were generating low-frequency sound. When the units were turned off, the problem suddenly disappeared. So, Gavro began experimenting with acoustics to create a weapon for the French military. A big shock! Whenever we discover something dangerous, turn it into a weapon. That does seem to be what happens. Gain of function. So Gavreau developed a few prototypes which he tested on himself and his team. And according to reports, one of the researchers died instantly. And Gavreau wrote, his internal organs mashed into an amorphous jelly by the vibrations. <laughs> Organ jelly. Now, even people at nearby labs were sick for hours. They said every organ in their body was vibrating. Hearts, lungs, stomachs, everything. Now, these weapons used infrasound, which are frequencies below human hearing. But what about frequencies above human hearing? That's called ultrasound, and it's also dangerous. There are two ways that ultrasound damages the body. The first is that sound waves can actually heat up human cells, which causes all kinds of problems. The other is something called cavitation. When sound waves pass through an object, they rapidly push and pull on that object. This is called compression and refraction. When ultrasound causes human cells to cavitate, it creates bubbles in the tissue. And this is exactly what happens to divers suffering from decompression sickness. The bends. Right, the bends. Ultrasound is such an effective weapon that it's been used by the US Navy to repel pirates. Arr. So the US has used sonic weapons against its enemies. But have the enemies of the US used sonic weapons to attack Americans? Turns out, they have. Did you know that there is a unique ingredient you can add to your coffee that can support your weight? A strange illness has been afflicting American intelligence officers and diplomats in Cuba, and it's now known as Havana Syndrome. And this summer, the CIA reported that officers were experiencing symptoms while traveling to India. And two U.S. officials visiting Hanoi suffered unexplained health incidents. And recently, German officials confirmed that they are investigating an alleged sonic attack against the U.S. Embassy in Berlin. So what does Havana Syndrome feel like? Well, it's described as someone suddenly experiencing a broad range of symptoms like migraines, anxiety, dizziness, lapses of memory, and cognitive disruption. Now, some people describe that they feel like they were hit by a blast wave or a beam of energy. And in some cases, the symptoms were brief, but other people experienced such devastating effects that they required hospitalization and long-term care. The first cases of Havana syndrome were reported in 2016 when Canadian and American officials arrived in Cuba. Now, CIA officers stationed at the embassy there reported feeling fatigue, nausea, and pressure headaches. And brain scans showed tissue damage that's normally seen in people with concussions after being in a car accident. The issue was so serious that the Obama administration evacuated the embassy. Hey, what did the Cubans have to say about it? Oh, they had no idea what could be happening. Uh -huh. But since then, Havana syndrome has been reported by U.S. officials all over the world. Cuba, China, Russia, Colombia, Uzbekistan, even the United States. And last year, two White House staff experienced symptoms while working at the White House. Now, according to investigators, the illness could be the result of a sonic weapon or exposure to high-energy microwaves. Another study done by the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine said that directed pulsed radio frequency energy could be responsible. Many intelligence officers are quietly pointing the finger at Russia, 
but no evidence has been made public yet. Then what did the Russians have to say about it? Oh, they deny any involvement. Uh -huh. As of now, there's still no official explanation, but the CIA and State Department have prioritized getting to the root cause of Havana Syndrome. Oh, no, they're always trying to get to the root cause. They are. Do they ever find it? Uh -huh. Thanks for hanging out with us today. My name is AJ. That's Hecklefish. This has been The Y Files. If you had fun or learned anything, help us out by liking, commenting, or sharing this video. Only with your help can we defeat the algorithm. It's evil, but it's genius. It's silent weapons for quiet wars. Weapons that you can't detect, you can't hear, you can't see, you can't smell, you can't taste, you can't touch, but you feel something that's there and you ignore it because of, you see everybody else doing what they're doing and you feel like, hell, I'm not finna be the black sheep out of all the white sheep. Let me be white as well and go along with get the get along. So yeah, it's silent weapons for quiet wars. It's frequencies you can't even detect, but it's still taking its course on your body, your mood. Heard is even cert is lights in the classrooms at school. And then you wonder why kids got ADHD, like lights that literally emanate a like some kind of vibe. And it has its, its effect to the people that's in the classroom. But everyone is different. Some people are more tolerant. Some people have a different side effect. Nonetheless, it's, it's like everything is bad. Yep, silent weapons for quiet wars. That's why it's all about being competent, capable, and sharp. Knowing it's about people, places, and things. You're going to go places where people, they know all around the location. They got home advantage. There's going to be people there. They may just simply be bad people. Hitlers, if you will. And they may have things. Guns, machetes, bombs, or silent weapons. And the war is on you. So it's about being competent, capable, being your own james bond or john wick so you know the roundabouts you know the swindle through this matrix and because we all in it so it's like do the things you need to do get your emf stickers for your electronics get you some blue filter glasses looking at these lights i need to do so as well get you some leaded paint make your own toothpaste because organic toothpaste somewhere isn't it more expensive than people um ground you shouldn't need pharmaceuticals over-the-counter prescription medicine at all not in this day age of paradigm we all have loved ones that died due to health complications due to the standardized fda approved poison until you the ones that feel like oh they can't do that check the other countries they got the same ketchups and all that but it's made with different ingredients ask yourself what and you got to follow the money who paid them to conduct this study and give it the green light that's war crimes on humanity but humanity don't give a damn they don't do nothing i hope you know it's people that work beyond the means of law um let me throw out something random it's a judge right his kid a silver spoon dickhead he a drunk driver. He ran somebody over and killed him. He called his father. That's the judge panicking. His dad, calm down. We're going to get you out of it. He's going to pull all kind of strings and do whatever he got to do to make sure Scott get off scot-free. I hope you know that. It's people in positions. His son, a daughter, born with health complications and it needs a kidney. He feel like you're poor he hire a bad guy john wick to quick scope your kid up close and confiscate his organs to insert it in his key because he feel him his kid is better than you that's that's how life works. it's really like that so i would just advise everyone just look into everything basically you look into everything you will you will figure it all out you will have you will be able to get well when you have the means and the money to do so to have everything in place to combat the silent weapons. That's it for this video. It's been a while. The Y Files, one of my favorite channels on YouTube. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick, and Rumble. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Us versus them, I'm out.